My name's Andrew Chauvin, and I'm part of a group of artists called Grey World. A lot of our work is generated by our desire to make work in public spaces, and, and this is a stupid project that we've just finished. This is um, a live voice to video. I mean, what a good way to start, I thought. Um, one of the epic speeches of Design in Darba 2012. A lot of the work that we make is about getting involved and allowing some form of creative expression in parts of the city that normally you don't have any. We thought it would be a really good idea to create a, a sun in London that would give London an extra few hours of sunlight. A giant two and a half tonne sun that was suspended on the top of a 200 tonne crane in Trafalgar Square. The idea being that on one of the most depressing and darkest days of, of the year, we can um, give a little bit of extra sunshine to, you know, to Londoners. We suspended it 40 metres in the air with 260,000 watts of electricity. And with that, we illuminated Trafalgar Square. We were quite staggered at the success of it, simply through everyone tweeting and taking photographs. It was the second highest trending topic on Twitter in the world for two days. It was mental. Second only to Justin Bieber, whoever he is. Every time I look at you, I smile. The funny thing about it is that the sun itself didn't produce any heat. I mean, it looked, I mean, it looked like a sun, but people swore blind that they could feel the warmth on their face, you know? We had uh, people who turned up in bikinis and sat in deck chairs, you know? And, and I talked to them and they were like, hey, it's warmer here. Now, it, it wasn't, but the, the psychological effect of, of a sun really is profound. And it was fantastic to watch people react that way. Really a bit of frog in the throat kind of moment, you know? We did a lot of projects which, which were sound based. This was a carpet over a bridge in, the, in uh, Ireland, over the Liffey. Uh, tiny little sensors embedded in the bridge made sound as you walked across them. So as you walk across this bridge, you walk through crunchy snow or you splosh through water or you walk through crunchy leaves. You know, one of the lovely side effects about what we do is what we call a community of presence. You and I may not know each other, but we're walking along a bridge and the floor is making music as we walk across it. And I turn to you and I say, this is amazing, or what a pile of rubbish, or what, and just for that moment, although we've walked next to each other forever, we have that, that interaction. And that's a lovely side effect of all of these installations. The London Stock Exchange called up and they said, we want something really grand to signify that the London Stock Exchange market has, has opened. They came to us and said, we want something amazing in our new building. Uh, and the Queen is opening it, and we want it to be very televisual. Um, and so we created the source, which is an installation with 729 moving spheres that move up and down, make different shapes. So it's a little bit like a, imagine an abacus, but in three dimensions. So you can send the, the little abacus balls up and down and you make the shapes like that. The stock exchange is moving to a striking new home next to St. Paul's Cathedral. The Queen opened the building today, with all eyes on the rather beguiling work of art which forms the centrepiece. It was perhaps one of the most unusual invitations the Queen has ever received. She pressed one electronic ball and more than 700 others suspended on metal cables began to move. It opened on the 23rd of January in 2004. 65 million people watched the opening. The little old Queen pressed the button and the spheres jumped into, into life. Um, and it was a massively stressful day with a really happy ending, thankfully. This is, this is uh, one of my faves. Paint, it's a very, very simple project. We give you a bucket and the bucket appears to be empty, but you can take a photograph and, and the bucket appears to catch that photograph in the bucket. You can then take your bucket and throw your face all over the walls. A lot of artists make an artwork and then they call it Momentary Lapse of Reason Part 6, untitled. But actually, um, our projects, when we do a project on a bridge, we call it bridge. We did a project with some railings, we call it railings. You get the idea. We came up with this idea initially, but we got asked to do a project in the north of England. Giant trees, huge oaks. Suddenly they've sprouted huge clockwork keys. Like the first chapter in a story, what happens when you turn the keys? There's a proper clockwork mechanism. Clockwork, wind up, music box. Sexy, don't know why, lovely, magic. Tiny little hidden music boxes all through the canopy, both in the trees, up above you, and in the floor, begin to play. And there are these keys dotted everywhere. Some of them, like this one, are very easy to see. Others are high up in the canopy that you can't get to. And there are some keys that are tiny for very, very small people, that, that are hidden in very, very small parts of the forest. 
So you realise that you're in this wonderful, magical place. This is, we like to think of this as the first chapter, really, of a story that hasn't been written yet. And this is called Clockwork Forest. What could be any less inspiring than a big white box or something that's stuck on a plinth? No, no, no. If you can clearly see the, 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 the line between our work and the city, then we failed. You know, our work really needs to be, needs to have come out of the city, needs to have, uh, have erupted from the city.